we are comparing, contrasting mitzvahs ben adam ramakom and mitzvahs ben adam chavero. And the example I always like using to as the springboard is the mitzvah of kivet aveim, the mitzvah of honoring one's parents, family trees, the works. So, well, how is kivet aveim? So kivet aveim is a unique mitzvah, as the Minchas Chinech and others point out. It has both elements of mitzvahs ben adam ramakom as well as Badam Machavero, because on one hand, kids are people too, parents are people too, you actually can get them a cup of water, get them melt away, whatever they might want. And then, on the other hand, the Gemara tells us in Kedushin, there are three creators, mommy, daddy, and God. Not necessarily in that order, but we have three creators. So on one hand, there are creators. So in fact, that's why the two, the Ten Commandments well, the Aserah said Dibros were given on two tablets. Why not ten tablets? Why not one? So they represent the two, oh, you know, the, well, the, f- the famous joke is why the two tablets is that um, they went to all the nations of the world and said, you want to accept the Torah? So they said, what's in it? So for one nation, so God said, well, thou shall not murder. Sorry, we can't, it's not for me. We, a whole blessing came on the sword from Esau. Other one said not to steal, adultery, different versions. They said, sorry, it's not for us. And they got to the Jews and they said, how much? He said, free, we'll take two. But that's the joke. The real shot is as follows. There are two categories of mitzvahs. The first five are be'adam wa'makom, belief in God, not to worship idols, Shabbos, etc. And the second side, not to murder, not to commit adultery, not to covet other people's fields, etc. So the two sides, one is Ben Adam Makom and Ben Adam Chavero. So at first glance, it looks like Kiv Aveim is on the wrong side. That's number five. It's on the first side. It should be on the second side. So the answer is no. It's a perfect transition. Because if I, if I rephrase it and say the first five are commandments to us and our Creator, our parents are our Creators. And they're also people, so it's a perfect transition from going from the first tablet to the second. So hence, um, Kiva Aim represents a unique mitzvah that is both elements of Ben Adam Ramakam and Ben Adam Chavir. We'll discuss it. There might be some other mitzvahs also that have a similar link, but Kiva Aim is a direct one. And we pointed out that when we get to, when we get to a discussion on it, we have to go through both aspects. So the question is, uh, the Rambam writes a major difference between mitzvahs Ben Adam Ramakam and mitzvahs Ben Adam Chavir is the bracha. We know that the Gemara tells us in Sachim, we make a bracha, the Birchas HaMitzvah, Ove so the different categories of mitzvahs. Bracha you make before you do a mitzvah, tefillin, talis, sukkah, there's bracha, shavach, valda, praise of God, you know, your thunder, lightning, other things, and then there's a bracha we make before we eat. So when it comes to Birchas HaMitzvah, we usually make a bracha, Ove and we make brachas on many things. But the Rambam writes, one of the, the distinctions between mitzvahs by Adam Ramakom and mitzvahs by Adam Chavero is Chazal never gave us a bracha on a mitzvah by Adam Chavero. Not every mitzvah by Adam Ramakom has a bracha, and, and then you could ask, why not? Living in Eretz Yisrael, if you assume like the Ramban, it's a mitzvah, so how come there's no bracha? So there's another share on that, but you have to come up with different principles. Why don't we make brachas on different things? And the good questions and their answers. But when it comes to Benam Chavero, Chazal never instituted a bracha. And that's why I say Kedushin, marriage, even though it involves people, but the Rabbam classifies it as a mitzvah Be'adam Makam because he says you make a bracha on it. So it's, you know, it's on the institution of marriage, not on the specific Mesameya Chasam Makala, like the famous Chasam Sofer. The Chasam Sofer writes at the beginning of Emor, speaking of, of Yichas, a person walks into the shore, we don't know who he is. He says, he wants, he says, any Kohanim in the house? So he raises his hand, no one knows who he is. They believe him, why not? And they give him the first bracha. And then later on they find out he was a phony. He wanted to see how it was to be a Kohen, to get the first bracha. So the Chassam Sofa said it wasn't a problem. Because why, why do we give a Kohen the first bracha? Why do we let the Kohen bench first? He's the first one. Because based on the Pasuk, the Kiddash, though, there's a mitzvah in our Torah to give 
to give um, uh, to give COVID to a Kohen because of his kedusha. So, so the Chatzotova points out the point is we're not giving specific COVID to this Kohen as I tell the Kohanim at my table. I'm not giving you Kohen because of you. I'm giving you Ben because of the institution of Kohuna. Let's be clear on that. But same thing here that it's the institution of to you did he said he was a Kohen so you gave him Kohen so. You, you fulfilled the Kiddash, even though it wasn't a Kohen, because the point was, you gave cover to the Kuhn if you thought he was. So, so they point out that um, when it comes to, so, so Kedushin is clearly a mitzvah because the Ram says you make a bracha. The certain mitzvahs, you know, we'll have to go into detail. They involve people, but sometimes there are been other, you know, between man and God. But if it's a mitzvah the Ram is categorically, there's no bracha. Chazal never instituted a bracha, a mitzvah and some suggest because apimachshava, because it doesn't make any sense. Because what's going to happen? A poor person comes to your door, very hungry, has the has hunger pains, which is another show we have to get into. Is if two people come to your door, one is starving, not life and death, but he's hungry, like in pain. You know, we should know from it. But being hungry, it actually hurts. It's a very physically it kills if you haven't eaten in so long and someone comes to your door with no clothes on so which one which one comes first clothing the naked or feeding the hungry so I'll give you the answer to the question it's feeding the hungry but we'll have contradictions we'll have to explain it so there's a so imagine someone comes to your door very hungry so you say okay great okay let me get the let me get the ribs working the chicken the wings the fries whatever okay one second Baruch Ata, you have to, of course, you have the best kavana now. Anytime you finish the bracha, the guy's dead or he's just more in pain. So the point being is, if the bracha is going to interfere with the Be'elam al-Chavero, Chazal never wants you to make, you make a bracha when it comes to putting on mitzvah Be'elam al But if it's going to interfere with you helping the person cross the street or helping them, there's no place for a bracha. And that, that's this week's parsha, of course, we can't resist. This is the beginning of Ayera. With Avram was sick, the uh, third day of circumcision, and Hashem came down to do Bikar Cholim. And all of a sudden, in the middle, Avram says, I gotta go now. The three angels dressed up his people, and he ran out. You would think it's chutzpah. How Avram knew it, that's how you could check out the shear that I gave you at 7 30. But, uh, but in terms of how to lead and we learn it from, we learn out. Gedola hachnasus archa and bikabola spayer yashrina. We learn out from Avram Avinu, greater is entertaining guests than it is speak than being in the divine presence. And they learn out the mafarsh the gedola, meaning that it's not a conflict, that's what God wants. In other words, like in certain religions, it's a, it's a conflict. If, if you love God, there's no room to love people. It's a, a famous story um, about someone who was walking with his father and he said, Do you love me, daddy? So of course I love you. Okay, five minutes. Do you love God? Of course I love God. Five minutes. But how can you love both of us? You're right. The love for God is so it's so encompassing. I have no time. To, there's no room to love. That's not the Jewish concept. The Jewish concept, in fact, that's the. I think Lubavitch had this meaning because I know from Hamilton Rabbi Yitkin used to say every morning before davening, via hafta l'orecha kamocha harin mukhan zuman and urns. That, that's the concept of when you're about to daven, I'll daven and say, I don't want to What do you mean do I have to? But no, there's no conflict. Everything, it's all part of, um, it's all together. So it's gedola. It's not that I'm taking, it's not that you're taken away from the divine presence. By entertaining guests, that's even greater level of reaching the divine level of being like imitating God, doing acts. How could you be like God? So it's like God does chesed, we do chesed. So it's not a conflict, it's gedola. So therefore, we don't make a bracha because it takes away from the act. It could take away, and therefore we never institute it. The one basic difference is the bracha. So the clay hemda, uh, one of the famous classical pilpil svarim on Chumash, I'm waiting for the new edition to come out, maybe. By new edition, I mean, it might even be out, is new print, I mean, because it's so hard to read that print, so it could be out waiting for the new print with some good footnotes on bottom to make him more enticing. But the Kwechemda, so he's a famous Sefer on Chumash, 
Rapatsky, and he points out that in, that one of the reasons why we don't make bracha, why don't we make a bracha man of Machavero? So he writes because the will by Kavana. Because mitzvahs, we know we have many, we've discussed before, the sogya mitzvahs sriches kavana. Mitzvahs require intent. Again, as always, and it's a machok, is in the Gemara. Gemara Rosh Hashanah, Gemara Brachas. As I always point out, what do you mean? There's a, some of the rabbis say you don't need kavana when you're doing mitzvahs? Well, that seems to be the minhag that we follow. But on a serious note, like, what do you mean? How can anyone say not? So, of course, no one's talking about before the mitzvah. Before you put on your tefillin, have kavana. Before you do anything, have kavana. It's a halacha question. It's a legal question. Post facto, I did the mitzvah without the requisite kavana. Do I have to repeat the mitzvah? That's the question. So, so if mitzvah shrich has kavana, yes. If mitzvahs don't need kavana, no. So, we have a discussion in the Gemara. In fact, it seems to be an apparent contradiction in the Rambam. By Hilchas Shofar, he writes yes. Hilchas Chamei Tzimatzi, so someone puts a gun to your head and makes you eat the matzah. It's okay. So, and it's a separate shir. We might have given or will give again in terms of yeah, you can get water in terms so that's a machokis so when we well, is a discussion but the straight sock is on a mitzvah in our Torah we pass a mitzvah srich is kavana on a mitzvah drabanan we say ain srich is kavana so Come, so comes along with Shlomo Zaman and the Min Shlomo Zaman Orbach and the Min Shlomo and others and the Kli Hamda. That this, if you notice, the whole discussion in the Gemara where the mitzvahs require kavana, that's only on mitzvahs but Adam Lamakom. But on mitzvahs but Adam Chaveiro, you don't need kavana. So why should that be? Why should you need kavana? And therefore, that's what the Kli Hamda writes. That's why the purpose of a bracha, he writes is to get you ready for the mitzvah, it's, it's a heksher to prepare you. So if you don't have to have the kavanah, so there's no need for a bracha. How do, what's the reason? Why would that be true? So that's what the Min Cheshkom and others explain. It's a fundamental difference between mitzvahs be adam wa makom and mitzvahs adam wa Again, even within be adam wa makom you have this split. So for instance, there are two parts to a mitzvah. There's the actual mice of the act. The act of doing it. When the Torah tells you to do something or not to do something, is it the specific act the Torah is mocked, concerned about? Or I don't really care about the specific act, I care about the result. So I'll give you two examples. So the Torah says, to keep you have to keep Shabbos. You get, we have a 39 prohibited activities. So what is the Torah concerned about? Maybe they're concerned about both, but the what's the main, what's the primary concern? Is it the act of cooking or is it eating the cooked food? Is it the act of making a fire or being in a room where there is a fire? So we know, well, the focus point is on the act. The biblical prohibition to be a Machal Shabbos Minat Torah, you have to actually do an action. You can't violate Shabbos Minat Torah by doing nothing. Not only not by doing nothing, but even doing something indirectly, what we call a grama. If you cause an action to happen indirectly, you're not labeled a machal Shabbos in our Torah. So the Rambam writes, Gram, Grama by Shabbos, you're not labeled a machal Shabbos. Yet the Rambam writes, when it comes to Hilchus Rotseach, to murder, he says if you hire a mercenary to kill someone, or if you tie someone up out in the jungle and then you have the lion come and eat him up. So he says you can't get capital punishment but you, you're, it's, it's Gram Ritzicha, and you are labeled a Ritzicha. Alright, what's the difference? Grama by Ritzicha, you're labeled a murderer. But by Grama by Shabbos, indirect violation, you don't actually do the act, but it happens indirectly, you're not labeled a Machal Shabbos. What's the difference? So the Rukh explains, because by Torah, by Shabbos, the Torah's concern is mocked about the act. So, if you didn't do the act, so, the fact that the result happened indirectly, well, not depending on what and what. It might be an Isid Rabban and it might be Mutzah depending on what the facts are. So then you're not labeled a Machal. If you don't actually go ahead and do the Bishul, if you don't go ahead and do the Borer, you are not a Machal of Shabbos. However, by murder, I don't care if it was a sword. I mean, the guy might care a little bit about how painful it is, but the bottom line is whether he used a machine gun, 
a knife, a razor. The point is, is he dead or not? You don't really care how the person was killed. So th yeah. that distinction works when you're talking about negative commandments, but when you're talking about positive commandments, does that distinction still work? Or is there right? Because if you look at, you know... No, right. Both, that distinction is negative, but because, right, in general, as a general rule, what Noah is getting at is, uh, there's mitzvahs ase and there's mitzvahs los ase. So usually a mitzvahs ase that involves something positive. Like generally, if it's a mitzvahs ase, that means you have to do something. I have to blow the shofar. I have to shake the lulav. A los ase means I have to actively do something. Don't eat kosher. That means I have to actually go ahead and eat non-kosher. That's why, for say, walking by McDonald's and not eating a Big Mac doesn't show, you know, it doesn't mean I'm, I mean, maybe I'm not hungry now, maybe I don't eat meat, it doesn't, it doesn't show anything by not doing something. But if I'm shaking a lulav, but I'm doing it because it's right, so that's more, you know, in terms of ase, you know, you have to actively um, do something. But in terms of, I'll get, I'll, get, I'll get to that point later, but right, so we're talking about, neg we're talking about the negative commandments, but we'll see this, the principle could apply to positive, say by truma. What let's say um, let's say meal we use this the expansion also Avram got gamal. So there's a concept of shlichus in general. The Torah says shlucho shal adam kamoso. Under the right conditions, you're allowed to point a shliach, and it's like you're doing it. On the other hand, we know certain mitzvahs shlichus doesn't apply. I want you to get up for me tomorrow morning and get the minion and put on tefillah for me. I want you to learn for me. It's a mitzvah of a gufo, you have to do it yourself. So what's the principle? What mitzvahs do we say that we apply the principle of a shriach is shlucho shalad and kamoso? And when do we say no, shlichus doesn't work? So again, so if it comes to, if the mitzvah is the maisa, so then obviously I can't apply a shriach. I, I have to do it myself. But if the mitzvah is the result, let's say kedushin, I have to get... It's to be married, so I can have a shriach give the ring on my behalf, or taking off truma, as long as the, the truma mites are taken off. So even on mitzvahs, you have you can have that distinction. The issue is whether you, whether it's a result to, within mitzvahs and makom, you have both kinds. But the focus is usually on the maisa, but not totally. You have different mitzvahs that have the focus is also on the result. But however, when it comes to adam achavero, they point out they usually the focus is on the totsah. It's result-oriented. As they say, you, know, you can have all the best thoughts in the world, but uh, you know, I thought, you know, I was thinking of going to the hospital, visiting this person. I thought you know, I was going to bring some food over this person, needed food for Shabbos. I, you know, I thought about, so then you know, that doesn't do the person any good. It's, as it, the, the expression I think in Yiddish, a bear a shatova, a bear meaning you have a fly on your back and a bear comes over and kills the fly but breaks your back. Don't do me any favors, you know, I'd rather have the fly on my back and don't, um, and don't kill the, you know, don't kill the fly. So when it comes to Benam Chavero, the emphasis is more on the result and not on the, and not on the makshava per se, as we see, as I explained. As I spoke about a couple of months ago, I'm sure Noah remembers, that the apparent contradiction, we pointed out that the, the Gemara tells us, and the Chumash tells us in Mishal, Yikach Moshe Moshe Yosef, that Moshe took the bones of Yosef out of Mitzrayim. And then, and yet we, and yet if you look in, in the Pasuk in Yoshua, it says, B'nai Yisrael took the bones of Yosef out of Mitzrayim. So which one is it? So if we had a video camera there, if we had a kosher tube there, we'd know it was Moshe who took the bones out. Physically speaking, there's no debate. Yet the Gemara gives the principle, the one who finishes a mitzvah gets credit not only for finishing, but by even, by, by, by get credit for even taking the bones out. So everyone agrees Moshe took them out, the Jewish people brought them in, but the Gemara gives credit for the B'nai Yisrael for everything. Yet, so we see, because the one who finishes the mitzvah gets credit for everything. Yet, we know we say in davening every morning, Bismar Shir Chadukas Habayis L'Shlomo, or David. So, I would have mean David. David started to build it, wanted to build it, Shlomo built it. So, 
I guess it must be a mistake. It should be saying Lashoma. So what's the so, so we see from here the one who started the mitzvah gets the credit. So what's going on? How do we reconcile? So the so Ramosh and others and, and the Piskei Shuvai Sor they focus on the distinction between Moshe versus David. That Moshe, anyone would have taken you would have taken the Atzmos Yosef out if you had the opportunity. It was, it was everyone else, you know, Moshe was given the chance, so he, was, he had the first choice, so he did it. But anyone, that would have long lines of people would have been happy to have the merit of carrying the bones of Yosef out. So if not for Moshe, it would have happened anyway. He didn't play a major role. And so therefore, he gets no credit because he didn't finish the job. Taking, but, but we'll get to that in a second. So therefore, Moshe Rabbeinu, if it wasn't for him, it would have happened anyway. But by David, if not for David, it never would have happened. If not for David, he's the one who put the idea of building a base on Mikdash. Of course, eventually there would have been a base on Mikdash, or maybe a couple hundred years later. So that's the distinction. When do we say the one who finishes gets all the credits? When it would have happened, the first person is not really relevant. It would have happened without him. But it, went, but it went to happen, but the base of Mikdash went to happen without David at this point, so therefore David gets the credit. And they bring down Halach Lamaisa on a shatkin. The meaning is, and it's brought down in the Ramah and Shulchan Aruch, you pay a shatkin if, if they're successful. I guess by successful here means they make it to the wedding date. I guess they don't take, I'm not sure if it's a divorce, if it's not good, and it's not a success, but I'm not sure from the shatkin's point, I, might, I don't think they get to think they keep their money. But either way, so the, there's a meaning to give money, so they say in the Chasir Shisvarim that shatkin stands for Sheker Dover, speaking for Kesef no saying you give the money. The last two letters stand for giving the money. So if you don't give the money, you're left with the first two letters, shade, which means demon. So it's not a good way to start off the marriage with shade. You want the shatan. But either way, so they point out, let's say someone set up people, they went out. Um, they went out for a couple months, okay, then they broke off, and then that's it, they forgot about each other. Then a couple years later, someone said, you know what, I have a great idea. And they set the same people up, and it works. Who gets the shachanah's money? So again, so definitely the one who, the second one definitely gets the money. The question is, if it would have, if the first person was irrelevant, it would have happened anyway. Then he could buy get nothing. But if the first person, the fact that he went out before, played a role, and so then he gets some of the money. So that's brought down even the halacha. But that the, but the answer I want to give is not the focus on the difference between David and Moshe. The focus on the difference between the mitzvah we're talking about. The mitzvah of Atzmos Yosef versus the mitzvah of Binyan Beis Hamikdash, building the temple. So the, we know the ultimate mitzvah of Adam Chaveiro, the Chesed Shalemis. That usually when we do a favor for someone, not that we're necessarily thinking, maybe we are, maybe we're not. That okay, the person owes me one. That's why they say, you know, when someone does you a favor, you say, you know thank you he says don't mention it in other words don't think we're even now because the thank you doesn't cover you you still owe me but either way whatever it means subconsciously the point being is kfura you're not you're not willing to get paid back anytime soon you'll hold off on the favor so kfura is the is the quintessential chesed as we'll get into it more next week um on kaisar about the mitzvah of kfura but so the effort crow is it's a it's a mitzvah adam chavero and what's the ultimate mitzvah Adam the Makom Tvila, the Beis HaMikdash, the Makom Tvila, the Makom of Karbana? So, so the Beis HaMikdash represents the classical mitzvah Adam the Makom. Atzimos Yosef represents a classical Beis Adam the So that's the shout. When do we say the one who finishes the mitzvah gets credit for everything? That's a mitzvah Adam the Because what do we say? What's the yikr? It's the result. No one cares what you, you might have good intentions, but great, take my bones out of Egypt and dump me in the midbar somewhere, thanks, but no thanks, but I'm, I'm happy in the Nile. In other words, if you're going to start at something, you're going to do something, you got to finish it, because the whole essence of Adam and is the result. So the one, who fi- the one who finishes, he gets credit for everything. However, when it comes to the Beis HaMikdash, but Adam HaMakom, so the ultimate, that has to do with your Makshava and all that, and that's, so that even the person who starts it can get credit, and that's that, that's the distinction. And that's why um, also I like to add to that that that's what the mitzvah of tefillin. We have the tefillin show yad and the tefillin show rosh. That tefillin show um, yad 
represent, uh, we'll explain, represent mitzvahs benam v'chaveiro, and tefillin shorosh represent mitzvahs benam v'makom. That they explain that the arm, that represents action, doing things, that's benam v'chaveiro, and benam v'makom is the machshava, you know, your thought, you know, trying to serve God, and, you know, not just the thoughts, but, uh, but when it comes to benam v'makom, the machshava plays a much more mitzvahs v'chaz kavana, Makshava plays a big role. That's why, that's why they point out. So, um, if you notice in the morning, you always, you put on your tefillin show yad, then you put on your tefillin show rosh, you take off your tefillin show rosh, and then you take off your tefillin show yad. If you notice, you never only have your tefillin show rosh on. Right? You ever notice that you always it's either only your tefillin show yad. So what's the lesson there? So the Bali Musa explained that this concept, you know, there's two ways of serving God. You have to do mitzvahs, but I'm a makam, and I'm a kaver. Of course, you have to work on both, and that's what the two tablets represent. To be a complete Jew, you have to be careful in your mitzvahs between man and God, as well as mitzvahs, but I'm a kaver. But now you want to start taking on extra things, chumras and that thing. So where should I begin? So the person, so that's what they point out, that you always have to be grounded. Like a, you never just have your tefillin shel roshan. In other words, just having the benam l'makom without the benam l'chaveiro doesn't make any sense. In other words, you have to ground yourself first. You know whether I'm, but you with nothing against chumras on kashras and many other areas. But first, begin with the iser of lashon hara and how to treat your friends. So that's what that's what the tefillin every morning represents. At first, you focus on. Of course, you have to do both. Whatever you have to do, you have to do. But once you're taking on extras, you should first focus on, you have to ground yourself in mitzvahs v'adam l'chaveiro, and then, because you always start off with the tefillin shel yad, and then you go to the tefillin shel rosh. So we see, but the key is that when it comes to tefillin shel yad, it's all about action. That's v'adam l'chaveiro. When it, it's the result that we care about. When it comes to mitzvahs v'adam l'makom, we see it's the makshava. And that's why we, we see that... Um, there's a famous kasha, the Kwe Chemdeas. There seems to be a contradiction, an apparent contradiction, as we like to have all the time. That uh, there's a mission in Nazir, it talks about a woman who took a nether, doesn't make a difference, but it could be not to eat ice cream, she wanted to go on a diet, not to drink wine, you know, whatever the, whatever the nether was, it doesn't make a difference. The mission has a case. and. What happened was she did without knowing her husband annulled her vow, but she didn't know it. So she thought she couldn't eat ice cream, she couldn't have melt away, whatever the whatever she wanted to stay away from. And she went ahead and did it. But so the so the Pasik says, Hashem Yislach La. She needs kapara. She needs an atonement. Even though she didn't do anything wrong. The bottom line is the food was permitted because it was no but in her mind she thought she was doing it, she had, so basically it was a machshava ra. And therefore it says, Hashem Yisrach ra, she had to need an atonement. Then we know, um, we'll, we'll come back to the Gemara in Kedushin, which says, machshava ra eno mitzdara flamaisa. So the Gemara in Kedushin says, a machshava ra doesn't count as a maisa. So there are many ways of answering it. Some say you're right. It's not a kasha, eno mitzdara flamaisa. It's not misaraf to an act, but you still need kapara. It's still not nothing. And there's a brisk rub on it. Maybe I'll say for another time because it's going to take a long time. Again, to the Klei Chemda. So he says, so he raised the kasha, it says, Shem Yisvachla. So we see from here that if a person has a machshava ra, but ends up doing nothing wrong, you need kapara. So he asked the kasha, is the famous Arachayim at the end of Parashas Vayichi. That's what I mean, he's a pilpul safer. We don't really know what pilpul is today. But pilpul, you have to have all the encyclopedic knowledge and you put everything together. So, but he, so he, that's what he does. He puts them from all different places and he has some interesting shtickles. So um, a lot of people, they make fun of pilpul, but you know, they don't really know what pilpul is. And it's not so much, like pilpul is like you'll make up something like a discussion between, it's not so much the way I learned pilpul anyway, it's not so much the case, you might make up the case between Yosef and Paro, but the point is, it's, it's the love that you're learning and the concept of a way to remember it. But either way, so the Orachayim writes, by Mechiris Yosef, it says, the Pasuk says that, Yosef, says, Yosef said at the end, you know, whether he actually forgave them or not, I think we spoke about before, but he says, don't worry, you know, when the brothers said to him, don't, he said, don't worry, 
you had you know you had your intentions but Hashem had his and I don't so you don't have to worry about it so it's like like the Archaimites if someone intends to um, poison his friend instead of giving him you know giving him poison gives him meat so you don't need kapar if the so so we see a machshava ra you know we see by mechiris yosef a machshava ra you know that was it he said they don't need anything so so it's apparent which one is it does a machshava ra count or not so that's what the klechem just says it depends so there's a famous gemara uh, i think we spoke about last year it's got into shabbos emergencies shomer shabbos doctor non shomer shabbos doctor but it's a famous gemara menachas i think it's samach dalid 64a where the person is going fishing on Shabbos and fishing is one of the prohibited activities and let's assume he knows that he's, he, you know, let's say he knows that you know, he can't go fishing and he's fishing on Shabbos and this is the right assuming he's successful and lo and behold he catches fish but he picks up the fish he finds a little baby inside but one of the kids fell off into the water he saved the kid's life so the question is, is he a machal of Shabbos or not? The Gemara gives you the lundis. It depends. Do we go basa machshava or do we go basa maisa? Do we go by his intention or do we go by the act? So that's the Gemara. So the machok is rabba rub. It's not clear how we passed it because different garrisons of who said what. And then we don't, we're not exactly sure how, how we passed it in terms of that Gemara. But, so it busts a machshava to the top. It's the discussion. So it comes along the klechem and says, "Don't we?" So that's the case of machshava ra. You had a machshava ra, but you did pikuach nefesh, so you did a mitzvah. So comes along the klechem and says, "This whole machlok is in the Gemara. Whether you go bust a machshava, bust a ma'isa, that's only mitzvahs ben adam la makom. That's all about chilul shabbos here. When it comes to chilul shabbos, we can discuss whether." A bad machshav is enough that you need kapara. But when it comes to bayad al nothing to talk about. Why not? Because bayad al machshav plays a key role. But bayad al it's bottom line result. Did you cause harm to someone else? If you didn't harm someone else, you don't need kapara. So when it came to the case of the nedir, that's a mitzvah bayad al So it's true, she had a machshav, run, nothing happened, but she didn't know that. Hashem Yitzlach, she needs Kapara, because she had a Makshava Ra and a Mitzvah Adam Lamakom. However, the case of the Arachayim with Yosef, Mechiris Yosef, or trying, or thinking of giving someone poison and you're actually giving them good food, so that's a Ben Adam Lachavero. When you deal with Ben Adam Lachavero, it's the result, and therefore a Makshava, so Makshava Ra, Edom Mitzdarach Lamaisa, you could say that's by a Ben Adam Lachavero. But my but when the mock comes, then you know, then we could discuss it more. So, we, so we see there are you know many distinctions. We are, we've done a couple tonight. We went through some issues of of bracha, kavana, makshava. They all play a role in terms of the fundamental yisod. You know, no bracha. That when the makom, the concern is more the makshava. That's why mitzvah week has kavana there. But by other makom, it's the tota, and that's why. The distinctions we made about uh, Machshava Ra by the case of the fishing, and here the difference between Mechiris Yosef and the difference between the Neder, the difference by, you know, Tzvil and Shayat, Tzvil and Chorosh. We went into Datsmos Yosef versus um, David building the base of Mikdash. So we see this fundamental Yisod that when it comes to Bedano Chavero, it's the result. Of course, I'll have to give another share on. I don't want to make it sound like. It's just the result. The main thing is the result, but we're going to see is the point is you're supposed to, you shouldn't be, or should you? I'll leave you with this question. We can continue next week. It actually ties into the parish also, but what is, when you're doing a chesed for someone, what should be your kavana? Should your kavana be, let's say you're helping, oh, no se el chavero, it's the compassion. He really needs my help. That's what's driving me. Is that the way we should do a chesed, or is it, because Tashiat Siva Hashem, God, like I'm shaking a lulav, God commanded me that that's why I'm doing it. So, in terms of, I don't want to, we'll see a Meshachach Marambam that I don't want to think, you know, at this point, I'm giving you the extreme, and I can ignore the other side, that obviously the impact that can't, it shouldn't just be like, oh, you know, I hate doing it, but I'm going to do it anyway. There is going to be a Saba, we're just focusing on this, the extreme now, 
and we'll come back next week or maybe in the following weeks and address that issue about chesed. Any questions? So we say mitzvah sri kavana for it's not that clear, right? Like I understand you're saying that. Oh, it's not clear. Mitzvah sri kavana. That's a machlokit in general mm-hmm. in the Gemara and mm-hmm. may, and the show, uh, whether how we passed it. So it's a steer in the Rama. But the bottom line, without getting into specific case, we assume on a mitzvah in our Torah, ben adam l'makom, we say mitzvah sri kavana. On a rabbinical mitzvah makom, we say mitzvah ain't sri kavana. However, when it comes to Ben Amakarero, there is no concept of Kavanah. Mm-hmm. Of, of, let's say, in other words, there's a Chazal in a Sifri in Parashat Kisete. Let's say you're walking home, you have a $20 bill that falls out of your pocket, and a poor person picks it up and he uses it to buy himself a meal. Mm-hmm. You get the mitzvah. No kav. Why? No, I, no kav. You didn't even know you dropped it. The bottom line is, you shech, that's the whole mitzvah. You forget it, you know, you leave it out. That is the mitzvah of the tzedakah is the result is he received the money. So the effort there's nothing to do with kavana. You don't even know it happened and yet we still as soon as you get the mitzvah tzedakah because it's the result oriented. So for the mitzvah shikhas kavana for the biblical commandment then that's also know. not that clear. No, right, no, I'm saying Whatever. no. It, right, no, so then, no, so then it gets into, right, I mean it's not clear, meaning then there are different distinctions. So Rabbi no, Yonah, others write, it depends. That only applies to a mitzvah which is only involves talking or words. Then you need kavana. But a mitzvah that involves an action, like shofar. So, yeah, uh, well, no, shofar is, would be shofar would be a good example. But say matzah and lulav. Why else am I shaking the dalamin? Am, am I cleaning the ceiling? Obviously, I'm doing it. So even if I'm not actually thinking right now, it's obvious why. If I thought, my, my mind is blank now. But if I actually thought it, I know why I'm doing yeah. eating the ma- so that's at some point that so we right so even right even on, that is 100 percent true I just wasn't good going into that chair on it yeah, but on mitzvah yeah, mitzvah yeah. striches kavana even on mitzvah's minat Torah is what to, is what to discuss post facto so shofar I remember that shofar was the that was the steer shofar the rabbim writes if you don't have kavana it's a no go but by matzah he writes it's a go so one so we had many answers but one answer was this that the Ramam sheet to the mitzvah of shofar is the hearing. So you're not doing anything. So if you're passive, then mitzvah sri is kavana. But by but but or, that's one distinction. But if you're active, so then the actions speak but left. For the bolt, for the bolt, okay. No, but even him, the mitzvah isn't a tekeya. The mitzvah he's just a he, he's just a means of getting. It's only a hechsher mitzvah. Okay. Everyone's equal. Or the other answer the Rav gave was that because shofar is a din in tefila. Why are we doing shofar in the middle of Shmona Esrei? Why do we blow shofar in the uh, in the silence when it's a it's a whole long cheer we gave on it. The shofar it's an inarticulate cry to a Kaddish Baruch Hu. So shofar is tefillah. Everyone agrees. Call tefillah below kavana. You know tefillah. The whole essence of tefillah is kavana. So you know kavana. It's not a tefillah. Again, I'm not getting into it. Wow, it's tefillah. But I'm saying no. So of course, yes. Yeah, so it's definitely not. It's definitely not Pasha. We could give many shir on my mitzvah tefillah is kavana. Yeah. In, in the banana well, and I have. the first. Whole, like when I was in Yeshiva two summers ago, the first whole month was just Mitzvah Srikas Kavana because we did Brach of the second pair. The second oh, yeah, they co- And every shear that they gave was just on that one thing. Right? It was interesting. Right. No, no, it's, no, it's a lot of them. Right. It's a whole lot of stickles on that. But I'm yeah. saying that was just giving the bottom line, but you're right. Obviously, there are many other. Halach f- Lamaisi, you have to ask the specific Shaila. Mm-hmm. Many times, you know, if you don't have the Kavana, then it gets in, did you have negative kavana? Did you have no kavana? You know, then so halakhically, you double one esra and you're half awake in the morning. Right, that's, that's a different thing. That's, right, that's because of a different reason. The, really, strictly speaking, it's again another steer in the Rama, but the bottom line is, at least you're supposed to have for bracha rishona. Mm-hmm. Again, the different types of kavana. There's a Chaim on it that there's one kavana of understanding what you're reading, the words, the simple types were, and then there's and obey left the Hashri, knowing I'm standing in the presence of God, I'm not playing football or doing something else. Mm-hmm. So therefore, so the bottom line is that really you're supposed to, if you're, for the Gedole, maybe some Gedole had door do it, if they didn't have Kavana for the first Bracha, they could go back. For us, the Ramah writes, it's not going to make a difference because they're not going to have Kavana any, the second, third, or fourth time to keep on going. Mm-hmm. Because 
but you know, that's, a, that's a separate problem that we can't, you know, we don't have the right kavana. But mm-hmm. so in terms, of, I'm not saying no one's yod say that tefila, but no. well, maybe I'm saying no one is, but we're all in the same boat. So basically, you know, we give it our best shot, but that's a separate share. Again, there are different th- within mitzvahs. There's many like um, this kavana we spoke about the sukkah share when in Thornhill when about the sukkah this is higher level. It's not just enough to know. You're doing a mitzvah, you have to look at the schach and to remember the miracles, the manya. So again, so that's the whole, within Kavan is the many different levels. I was just here, the point of tonight was just to show a, a major distinction between the role of Makshava in mitzvahs Be'alim Lamakom and in terms of Kavan. Right, in terms of Be'alim Lamakom, you know, that's the whole, we could give a couple, we can and probably will give many um, classes on that topic.